Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and today's video is just going to be kind of an informational video. I want to talk to you guys about body armor, different types of body armor, different plate carriers, different cuts, different threat levels, and so forth, so that you kind of have a better understanding of what you might be looking for if body armor is in your future. Now on the table in front of me and behind me, I have more than a half dozen sets of body armor. Each one of them I've tested out independently. I've shot them with multiple calibers from different length barrels. I have really put body armor through the works over the past five or six years. And it's been a lot of fun. It's also been a very big learning experience. But if you're somebody who's shopping for body armor, the first thing that I suggest you do is learn the terminology. Because when you're on a website and you're looking at a set of body armor and there's a bunch of numbers and letters and stuff like that, you wanna understand what all of that means. So the first thing that you want to understand is threat level. Now when you're talking about threat level for body armor, that basically means what type of threat will it stop? And so you want to look at those different numbers which are associated with different types of rounds. So when you're talking about anything in the level 2 family, you're usually talking about something that will stop a pistol caliber cartridge, okay? So maybe up to a 44 Magnum. And then each manufacturer will also state what that means in terms of velocity. So it'll stop a 44 Magnum, that's up to a specific grain, up to a specific speed, okay? Because it's really speed that kills body armor. The faster something's moving, even if it says that it'll stop a specific caliber, if that specific caliber happens to be going a lot faster than maybe the average, then there is a potential that that could go through the body armor. So understanding that is very important. So again, level two is gonna be for your pistol family. Uh, when you move up to let's say like a level A, uh, 3A, a level three, level three plus, level three plus plus, whatever else is out there now, you're usually talking about your common rifle cartridges. So your uh, 76251, your 308, uh, 76239, you know, the AK round, uh, 556 and so forth. Now, when it comes to level three, that seems to be the most common area that people are buying body armor. This is uh, what's considered a level three plus right here. This is uh, a composite material. And then this is a level three right here. This is a steel material. Each one has benefits and disadvantages. Uh, even the nice, super lightweight level three plus that I'm holding here, believe it or not, does have some disadvantages even over steel. So uh, it's good to understand what those are. Now, again, when you're in that level three or level three plus range, you're talking about, again, specific calibers at specific speeds. When you get up to the level fours, level four plus and even higher, that's usually when you're talking about stopping armor piercing rounds. So if you want to stop an armor piercing round, you're going to have to go up to an even higher level, but the price increases drastically. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that when you buy something from a reputable uh, body armor dealer, okay, you want to buy good body armor, you don't want to buy anything that's super cheap that you've never heard of before, usually it'll come with a paper that'll look something like this, okay? You'll get this paper right here. I'm shaking like crazy. But uh, you'll get this paper right here, and this paper will actually have a list of the threats that that particular body armor panel will stop. And so you wanna make sure that you understand what those threats are so that you're not in front of something thinking that you know this will stop it when in reality it won't. So let me go ahead and give you guys a quick example of uh, the difference between steel and composite body armor. So if you're looking at lightweight composite body armor like this versus maybe just a standard AR500 steel plate like this. Now, a lot of people like AR500 because the company made a big push back in the days, maybe four or five years ago, got this stuff out to a lot of different people and and you know, it got in front of a lot of eyes and they, they had a really good marketing push on it. And it's also a very affordable option, but there are some common misconceptions about steel body armor. When I see people test steel body armor, for some reason they wanna take one of those, you know, 62 grain green tips and shoot it at steel. But here's the thing, when it comes to steel, velocity really does kill. A 62 grain projectile is actually going slower than a 55 grain projectile. So the chances of a 62 grain, even with the uh, steel core rod that's on the in, uh, inside of a green tip, even with that, you have a less likelihood of penetrating a steel body armor plate that's level three or higher uh, because the speed is slower. You actually have a higher likelihood of penetrating something like this with a standard 55 grain full metal jacket because again, the velocity is gonna be higher and that speed kills. And so again, you're gonna have a higher likelihood of penetration 
with a standard 55 grain full metal jacket. Now, on the other hand, when you're talking about composite materials, composite materials are susceptible to weight and speed, okay? But weight plays a little bit more of a factor when you're talking about composites. Now, whether it be ceramic or some type of polymer, usually it's the 62 grains that have a higher likelihood of passing through than a standard 55, because you have that heavier mass that's hitting this, and it uh, kind of forces that expansion out and allows the bullet to actually make it all the way through. And so, you know, again, with the steel a higher likelihood of the 55 grain going through because of speed and then with the composites there's a higher likelihood of the heavier 62 or even 77 grains going through and that's again because of the mass and velocity the amount of energy that it's hitting it with so it, it's different how each one of these plates dissipates that energy now as we also continue to talk about threat levels I want to mention one thing if you see a plate okay a plate like this that says level 3 and it has an NIJ rating of level three, that's perfectly fine. But if you see a plate, not, not necessarily this one right here, but if you see a plate that says level three plus or NIJ level three plus, I would be skeptical because the National Institute of Justice who has the laboratory uh, that does the testing for this, they do not rate anything level three plus. So if you were to get something rated by the National Institute of Justice for your company, so let's say Defender sends this in and they wanna have this thing ballistically tested, uh, the NIJ is not gonna give it a level three plus rating. They'll, they will give it a level three rating but they won't give it the plus rating. The plus rating is something that happens from the company's end. So if the company feels that their plate performed so well that it would actually stop a threat level that is slightly higher than a standard level three, then they can put on the plate that it's a level th three plus. The NIJ cannot do that. So if you see something that's stamped that says NIJ rated level three plus, that's when I would become a little bit skeptical because again, that is not an NIJ rating. You wanna look for something that says level three, but again, if it says level three plus, that means the company is putting its confidence in their product, uh, saying that it should stop threat levels that are slightly higher than the National Institute of Justice. So the, the thing about that is when it comes to the three plus and, and what it will stop that's a little bit extra, sometimes with the velocity of a 7.62 by 5.1, the NIJ will test that and it'll stop it absolutely no problem. But then you move up to a 308, which might have higher velocities depending on the type of bullet that you're using the cartridge and so forth if it'll stop that which is higher let's say faster and heavier than the NIJ's testing uh, and the company has tested that then they can put the uh, level three plus on it because obviously it stopped around that was bigger and faster than what the NIJ tested it with so again level two pistol level three rifle level four is when you're going to get into some serious business so now that you understand the threat levels uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic Okay, so now let's talk about impact characteristics and back face deformation. These are very important topics as well. Each one of these plates is going to react differently if hit by a round. So, you know, we have our steel plate right here. We also have our uh, composite plate, which can be made of some type of polymer, woven material, a combination of two, uh, also polymers. I mean, there's a lot of materials out there that have been developed now uh, that are very good at stopping rounds. And then we also have a Kevlar uh, vest right here. This is from Safe Life Defense. Uh, they had sent me one to test out years ago that was just like this and I put that thing through the ringer and I was really impressed with the uh, Safe Life Defense vest. This thing is, I'm, I'm telling you, this thing is incredible. It even stopped stuff that was well beyond NIJ standards. But still, each one has different impact characteristics and back face deformation. So when you're talking about steel, Steel is simply a hardened surface, right? And so when you hit a hardened surface, what happens? Just like when you shoot a steel target, the bullet's gonna vaporize and all of that material is gonna be shot out from the plate. So while that material's shot out, which is what we call spalling, all of that material is gonna go somewhere. And since the plate sits right here, where do you think it's gonna go? It is gonna go up and around and probably into your neck if you do not have the proper coating. On here, you can see that I have pretty much no buildup coating at all. There's a simple coating on it, which is sort of like bed liner, you know, just a typical bed liner style coating. This is not gonna do much to stop spalling. If you have a steel plate that doesn't have anything on it, it's not gonna do anything to stop spalling either. And so you know that if this thing is hit, the, uh, the characteristics are gonna be 
a big flower pattern. You're gonna get an instant stop of that bullet and then a flower pattern of all of that spalling kind of going in every single direction. So it's good to know uh, whether or not you want to consider spending the extra money to get a better buildup coating, which is definitely what I recommend. A buildup coating will be coat after coat and layer after layer of this material, uh, enough so that once a bullet hits it, it will actually penetrate that buildup layer, hit the steel, and then that buildup layer will actually contain the spalling, and usually it will contain multiple hits before it allows any of that uh, metal material to leave the buildup coating. So uh, that's really important. Now, when it comes to back face deformation on steel, there is usually not much at all. Uh, there's maybe a little dent, here and there, you know, depending on where you hit it. I mean, I've hit these steel plates hundreds of times and still there's no bulge or dents in the back at all. So you get, uh, you know, the very minimal back face deformation. Now, the interesting thing is with steel plates, when you hit steel plates, it's gonna ring you. Uh, it's gonna ring you pretty good too because you're basically having one plate that's gonna absorb all that energy and it's going to feel like a direct energy transfer. So if it hits right here directly behind it, it's gonna feel like a reverberation and a direct hit to the person who's wearing it. And that's why they sell things called trauma pads. A trauma pad is an additional pad that will fit behind this that is meant to absorb the energy. So I mean, imagine, you know, you put on a helmet, put this thing right on your head and then tap it a few times. I mean, you're gonna feel the tap that you're making on your head. It's gonna work the same on your chest cavity, right? So you wanna make sure that if you do, you get a buildup coating, get some type of uh, trauma pack that will fit, you know, or a trauma plate that'll fit behind this. That will absorb the energy of a steel plate being hit by a bullet. Now, when you're talking about a composite material, both polymer, ceramic, and otherwise, it is gonna work a little bit different. You usually do not have any spalling or very minimal spalling, but not from the bullet with a plate like this. So if this plate was to get hit, the bullet's going to penetrate the outer material, which is designed to slow down, expand, and stop the bullet. That's why you see these bullets that are always squished, right? They're mushroomed out. Even if they're a full metal jacket, usually they're mushroomed out in something like this because the multi, multiple layers that they use of materials in here are designed to do different things at different levels. So it will hit this, it will, it will break apart, it will slow down the bullet, and then usually there's a layer in there that will catch the bullet. Uh, this one right here, this Defender Armor, which is, uh, it's if you watch my channel for a long period of time, you know Defender is my favorite type of body armor. But this one right here has almost like a built-in trauma pad in it. So it's got this soft material on the back right here that's meant to absorb a lot of the energy that that bullet gives it. So again, this one works by slowing down, expanding, and then stopping that cartridge. And then again, it has that soft material. What you don't get from this type of body armor is that spalling from the metal because it's not hitting a solid steel surface. So you're not gonna have all that spalling come out. But what you are gonna have, if it's ceramic, you're gonna have ceramic pieces that might fly out, but they usually tend to fly out a little bit you know, away from somebody. And if you're wearing a plate carrier, more than likely that ceramic material is gonna be contained in that plate carrier. The downside to this type of body armor, uh, even though it's not steel and you don't have to worry about the spalling, one thing you do have to to worry about is back face deformation and that's because this type of material meant to absorb that round is going to expand out of the back and that's a lot of times why when we test body armor we put it on some type of clay i'll put this on maybe a water bottle like a five gallon jug just to see how much energy is actually transferred or whether or not it breaks the jug or a bale of hay to see how far it pushes in the hay in the back um, i've tested these out in several different ways to see how they react and uh, defender armor i've tested maybe four or five plates over the past several years. And uh, one plate I put 28 rounds of 5.56 five, into it with absolutely no pass through. But when you flipped it around, it was all completely bowed out. So again, you're gonna have back face deformation and that's basically gonna feel like a punch to the chest. It's gonna knock you on your ass, but it's gonna stop that bullet. So by stopping the bullet, obviously you're not gonna perforate any of your vital organs. So again, there's plus sides and there's downsides, you know, more back face deformation on this one. But again, you're talking about, you know, some different characteristics. On top of material, there's also cuts. There's several different cuts that you can choose from. Some people might want one over another and each one is maybe developed for a special purpose. So the one that you guys were looking at, the original Defender, this is just a standard cut plate. Okay, nothing special about this, just a standard regular cut plate. The plate that you were looking at for AR500, 
This is what was originally considered their shooter's cut. The reason it was called the shooter's cut is because it's cut down a little bit more on the sides. Since that, they've actually made the shooter's cut a little bit better, so they kind of brought it down a little bit more on the sides, and that helps you bring your arms out if you need to be shooting or holding a rifle or a gun or something like that. While you're wearing this plate, you know, you can still get your arms out there because of the cut on the plate right there. But there are also other cuts to consider. One is going to be considered a swimmer's cut. So here is a plate carrier that I have right here. This has a swimmer's cut in it, and uh, this is my Spartan armor system. It's very, very heavy because this one actually has extra plates on the side. We'll talk about those in just a second. But these are level three plus steel plates, just like AR500 armor. But this one is in the swimmer's cut that I was talking about. Now the swimmer's cut is really interesting because it is essentially made for extreme movement, okay? So if you're gonna be doing, let me get rid of this noise here. If you're gonna be doing a, a lot of moving, a lot of climbing, um, you know, if, you're got, if you have a lot of dexterity that you need at hand, then a swimmer's cut might be the best choice for you because it allows the most movement. By the way, this is a very good plate carrier. This thing is not coming out. So let me go ahead and open this up here real quick so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Swimmer's cuts aren't super popular. Uh, and that's because they offer a little bit less protection than a standard, uh, a standard cut. But still, I think it's a good option, again, if you're looking for dexterity. So here is our swimmer's cut plate. Now, the swimmer's cut, like I was saying before, is cut small so that you have that extra dexterity. I mean, I can reach all the way out in front of me. I can do push-ups. I can climb a wall. I can climb a mountain. I can do whatever I want with a swimmer's cut because it is designed for me to be able to move everywhere. But this is a level three plus plate right here. Again, standard steel, but this one, unlike the uh, AR500 armor that I just showed you, this one does have a slight curvature to it as well. So again, cut in here, cut in here, cut towards the bottom, and then has a slight curve. Now, people are gonna say, how is that gonna stop anything? How is that gonna protect anything? Well, the first thing you gotta remember with body armor is that it's really only designed not to protect your entire upper torso, it's just designed to protect your vital organs. So your lungs, your spine, right? All the stuff that's located right here, your heart. And so as long as it's sitting where it's supposed to be and you're not wearing it way down here or way up here, you know, you're wearing it right where it should be, then it should be enough to stop a direct hit to those vital organs. And that's what body armor is intended for. But again, not everybody likes a swimmer's cut because they like the protection to kind of extend out a little bit more as well. So we have the swimmer's cut, we have standard cuts. I mean, there's a bunch of different other things to consider as well, including curvature, material, size, and weight. Now, weight is also a very big issue. If you've never worn body armor before, these things can get very, very heavy depending on how you're set up. Obviously, steel body armor is gonna be the heaviest. This is a relatively small plate and it's, it's pretty heavy. You add a front and back plate, now you've added that extra weight. And then, like I was saying before, this particular plate carrier actually has uh, side panels you know, to protect your kidneys and so forth. And these side panels are even heavy. So you're talking about a total of four steel plates in this setup. And when you're wearing it, I'm telling you, if you're not in shape, you're gonna feel that pretty quick. And so it's important to consider what your capabilities are as well. How fit are you to carry something that heavy, both front and back plates, maybe side plates. Don't forget, you might have some medical, you might have magazines and stuff like that all loaded onto one setup and if it becomes too much you're just going to be completely immobile so you want to make sure that you get something that will fit the weight that you can handle now my go-to is back here let's see if i can grab this without dropping too much so this is my go-to right here this is my agilite tactical k5 plate carrier absolutely my favorite plate carrier this has Defender Ar Armor Level 3 Plus plates in it right now. And these plates are fantastic. They are extremely lightweight. I have two plates in here right now. This thing can be set up with magazines, medical, everything that I want, and I'm good to go. However, this does not have any type of side protection at all. You can see that we just have those straps on the side that hold this thing together, and that's pretty much it. Now, I did add a pack to the back of this, and you can put a helmet in there, uh, also by Agilite. So it's got this like helmet pack holder and a backpack. Uh, for it as well, and that's for hydration and stuff like that. But this is kind of my go-to setup, and this has composite body armor in it, uh, level three plus again, and it's a very easy setup. So it's a lot more lightweight, 
and I can keep going pretty much all day wearing that thing and it doesn't really bother me at all. I think uh, the total between the two plates that I have in there is maybe three pounds when you're talking about a standard steel plate that could weigh up to eight pounds per plate. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is strike face and expiration date. I think a lot of people are surprised to find out that body armor actually has an expiration date. Even steel body armor has an expiration date and people always ask why that is. Well, when it comes to composite armor, uh, the elements are a big factor in that expiration date. Now, the reason they put an expiration date on there is really just to kind of cover their own butts. But what happens is when you have a body armor panel like this and it is not properly stored and it's exposed to the elements it will start changing and that's because it can start absorbing a lot of the moisture that's in the air and it will start degrading that body armor so it's not something that's going to happen really fast it's something that's going to happen over time and that's why the expiration dates are usually like five years out or longer but still it is definitely something that can happen if you're somebody who lives in a wet climate and there's always a lot of moisture in the air and you have this just sitting out all the time then chances are uh, that is going to affect the performance of the plate and obviously these you know companies they don't want to be held responsible because you know you didn't store your plates correctly and so they put an expiration date on there because it covers them for that they know that their plate in even bad conditions will last a specific amount of time and so they'll put an expiration date on it now there's also the the strike face oh I should mention steel body armor steel body armor usually has a coating on it right and underneath that coating you have steel and steel can corrode and so if there's even a pinhole or something where water is allowed to seep into that steel plate the steel can actually start rusting behind that coating and it can also degrade the steel that's behind it and so uh, it's one of those things where they're just kind of covering their butts again because uh, if you store it somewhere where it's wet and that steel starts corroding underneath there and starts getting all rusted out it's not going to have the same uh, characteristics you know for stopping bullets that it did when you first got it and so that's kind of one of the at least one of the reasons why an expiration date exists for body armor now the other thing to consider is strike face uh, people will ask me is strike face is it all that important because you could take a standard flat plate and put strike face on the front of it but it's exactly the same on the back so why would the strike face matter well if you have a standard steel plate just a regular steel plate uh, with no buildup coating or anything on it then yeah it doesn't matter uh, you can go ahead and use that on both sides but if you have a steel plate that says strike face on it there's a good chance you're going to want to use that strike face out towards whoever might be shooting at you and that's because a lot of times what they'll do on a steel plate is they'll add extra buildup coating to the front so you're going to get the most spalling protection on the front of the plate not on the back of the plate also there could be curves to the plate different shapes and sizes and you don't want to put the plate on backwards where it is not supported you know your body supports body armor and so if it's got a curve to it and the curves going out and not in towards your body and that's not supported it's going to allow that plate to move a lot more and could allow the round to pass through if it's unsupported and it could also cause more damage because of back face deformation so the reason you want to shoot on the strike face only is for several different reasons again with steel when it, when it comes to composite it's even more important because the way that they build up the layers is in a sequence that starts at the front of the plate so the sequence of events that needs to happen to slow that bullet down enough before it actually passes through is going to be set up specifically this way and if you turn it this way there is a high likelihood i've, I've tried it just to see what would happen a uh, high likelihood of the bullet going through uh, just a standard 55 grain 556 that i've tested on plates before where i've shot them a dozen times and nothing goes through take that exact same plate and you flip it over you shoot it one time that bullet flies right through like it's butter and that's because the strike face is meant to uh, interact with that bullet before anything else so again these are all things that you want to consider if you are somebody who's looking at body armor so you want to talk about my recommendations for body armor i particularly prefer to go with a composite body armor and that has to do everything with weight I love the weight of a composite body armor it doesn't matter if it's ceramic doesn't matter if it's a polymer or other type of material uh, weight is very important especially if you're going to be wearing body armor for a significant amount of time then you want to make sure that you keep that weight low and so for me I'm always going to look for some type of composite that's just that's my preferred body armor panel but again I understand that these things get expensive and so if you need to save money it's better to have some body armor than no body armor so if you can't afford a composite then go with a steel but go with something that's curved go with something that's comfortable maybe like a premier body armor uh, which you know will will uh, fit you a little bit better and maybe even be a little bit lighter the premier body armor is is actually significantly lighter than ar500 armor 
Now, I know this video is going a little bit long, so I'll keep this part short, but I want to touch on carriers real quick. This is the fun part to me. This, you know, after I've bought my body armor, uh, I get to pick the carrier that I want and the pattern that I want for what exactly I want it to do. Different carriers do different things. The first carrier that we have here is just simply to hold plates. Uh, this carrier is going to be perfect for holding a plate and really not much more. That's what it's designed for. This is actually designed to be kind of like a concealable vest right here. So I can take this, I can put some lightweight body armor in it, I can put a jacket over it and wear other things there's not going to be any magazine holders or anything like that it's easy on easy off with velcro and you know there's nothing on the side it's just this uh elastic material that's going to hold everything to you and it's a very simple and basic uh carrier but it works really well for certain things i wouldn't use this for home defense because it's not really easy on easy off so to speak uh, there are other ones that are a little bit quicker uh, other plate carriers that i've used are maybe just this condor i've had this condor plate carrier right here for about six years now i've used it uh, quite a bit actually a lot and it's held up really well. It has a spot for um, a hose to run through it, so you can run hydration, uh, molly oil all over the back, so you can add hydration pouches, you can add backpacks. Uh, on this one, I have a Haley Strategic Pack that I got from MSR Arms. Uh, this Haley Strategic Pack is really nice. It allows me to run either hydration or just add a bunch of things, uh, you know, administrative stuff and so forth. So, you know, you can do that with a plate carrier like this, and they are basic and very good for home defense. The reason that these are good for home defense is because it uses just a simple buckle on the side. So I can leave this at the setting or the size setting that I want, leave this right next to the bed if I want to, and then just throw it on over my head, click one buckle, and I'm done. I don't have to worry about cinching any Velcro down, lifting any flaps, or doing anything like that. So for home defense, something like this is fine. And Condor plate carriers, uh, even though they sucked 10 years ago, uh, they've actually come a long way and they're not bad gear now. I mean, I wouldn't take it to Afghanistan, but I, I suppose you could. Now, my favorite plate carrier is the one that I showed you guys already once before. This is, again, the Agilite Tactical K5 plate carrier. This is like uh, the, the Cadillac of plate carriers because it is adjustable in pretty much every single way. And a lot like uh, other plate carriers, this one right here has uh, an incredible amount of padding on it. So you have almost like that, uh, you know, that soft padded panel on the back breathable mesh material. The top can be uh, adjusted to fit you just right. The adjustments are actually on the inside of the plate carrier so that you don't have anything sticking out. You know, none of, none of that stuff that's gonna be flapping around the front right here. You make your adjustments on the inside, which is also padded. It's got admin pouches on the top right here, a bunch of molly in the front, uh, a bunch of molly in the back. And again, I've added uh, you know another carrier here. This is my helmet carrier on the back that I've explained already before with the pack uh, attached to that. And so this is my favorite. It's the most comfortable plate carrier that I've ever tried. I've probably tried 20 different plate carriers and this definitely comes out uh, on top so far. You know, I've got my gloves there. I've got a way to hold magazines, uh, medical equipment and so forth. So this is my plate carrier of choice, but they, they work just fine. So I would say go with what suits you, but you might end up buying more than one plate carrier. Uh, the reason for that is because if you find one, then you find one better. Once you go to the store and you start trying them on, uh, you might find yourself going, oh, that one kind of chafes my neck. Let me try this one. You'll, you'll, you'll see. It's kind of like a rabbit hole that you'll go down with body armor, but it's a lot of fun and it's always good to have body armor. You never know if there's going to be civil unrest or some other reason why you might need to put it on. You know, I have body armor for my entire family and if something were to happen, then I know that at least everybody is minimally protected by their body armor. So uh, again, it's a very intense and very deep topic that we could talk about for a long time. I do have a playlist of body armor tests uh, on my channel, which I'll link down below. So if you want to see uh, any of this body armor be tested, you can just go there and check it out. It's pretty cool. So anyway, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like, subscribe. Have a great day.